it starts with Shim, and this is actually before the war. Um, but probably, you know, one, his, one of his most famous photographs there of a woman nursing a baby. Um, and this was a story that he was sent by Fougard magazine to do, really to capture the, 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 the state of the country following the elections, the Popular Front. Um, and France was very interested in what was going on because there were a lot of strikes. And it was sort of similar to what was happening in, in France, too. Um, you can see it's a land reform meeting for peasants to start to understand their new rights for, for um, owning land, which was a really big deal for Spain and a big part of the elections. And you can see he's down in the crowd looking at you know the faces of the individuals and from this incredible composition. And again, this very you know weathered face looking up, um, you know, sort of confused, tortured, but interested and engaged at the same time. And, the, and I think obviously her, this kind of Madonna figure, is so iconic kind of representing Spain, you know, tending to her needs, but in this very, um, you know, unsure position, you know, sort of being both, you know, with the people and their position and the greater vision from above, which is something he does again and again when he, when he photographs public events. Um, but you can you can see at the beginning of the war and some other photographs from the early part. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of energy that were displaying both the contact sheets and um, some of the prints from the contact sheet. And it allows the viewers to see um, how a photographer thinks about the image. This is a great story, an important story that was probably his first big story that was published in several international magazines. It was called The Protection of the Arts. And it was a big, really a propaganda story to counter the narrative of the, the nationals of Franco, who were claiming that the Republicans were anti-cultural, anti-history, had no respect for cultural heritage and religion and, you know, all of, great, of Spain's great history. Um, and so, um, he documented a moment where the de Casas monastery in Spain, um, where they were taking out of some of the great paintings um, and bringing them to another city, I think to Valencia, so that if the, any of the bombs hit the monastery, the artwork would be saved. And it was a really important story to get out in the press. The Basque area in the north was an interesting part of Spain during the war because it was a very heavily Catholic, rather traditional part, but rather than side with the nationalists, as was true with the Catholic Church, they sided with the Republicans, sort of in exchange for political autonomy at the end of the war. They had their own army, um, and they, they were fighting the nationalists. And this is one, a parade in Bilbao. Um, so you can see, again, you know, Shim, He's out on, you know, watching the parade right on the street, looking at the soldiers, and then goes up on the balcony, then also turns his camera and gets this wonderful, very modernist composition yeah. of the, the parade. You know, Shim had this brilliant ability to combine these beautiful compositions, very, very smart visual sensibility coupled with these layers of historical and political narrative that make the image that much so that, that much more dynamic um, you know quite unlike Kappa that didn't have as much of the of the aesthetic composition but more of the emotional and sort of human side and this one I think is almost like an impressionist vision of this sardiniera walking in the front layer and then as these other um, layers in the back get sort of more industrialized to these the steamboats in the end but it's just this flattening of the different visions of that one scene together is what makes it, it so poignant. This is really where Taro's work begins and th but it starts with um, two stories where Kappa and Taro worked side by side together. We really couldn't tell whose was whose. I mean we had the same print in the archive of vintage prints, stamp, one stamped Kappa, one stamped Taro. It was, you know, impossible to tell. But then it was very clear in the suitcase, these three rolls of film, that this camera was different from this camera. Because if you magnified the frames on the computer, you could there was a little marking on the edge of the camera. And looking careful at these in this frame, which is this, there's Taro. 
there's her with her camera, her like a camera, and also you can see her here. So the same. So we were able to say, okay, this is t this is by Kappa. You know, I think it's interesting to see Kappa really down. You know, squatting on the ground. You know, they're kind of it's very physical. And then she is still has a more aesthetic composition. You know, you can see she's up from an angle, looking at that strong diagonal, very influenced by Russian constructivists. Um, photography. She was she studied film um, in Germany before she came to Paris. And there's sort of hints of war. This man who was really wounded. Um, you know, these big posters um, in the middle of the square. Um, this woman, you know, selling under a, um, one of the propaganda photos. And you can see again this very strong compositional quality. These strong diagonals of all the lines, and it really is. You know, the formal is echoing the content in a really beautiful way, an interesting way. I think within that very strong aesthetic, there's something like this, which is much looser, much more snapshotty, which is what was more her style going forward after this, um, and more a bit more like Kappa's. But what's interesting about these is that they were in the Mexican suitcase. They have nothing to do with the Spanish Civil War, except that, you know, her death in Spain was almost inextricably linked with photographs of Spain. You know, and so that, you know, I think I think all these negatives were gathered together for a project, for a book project, maybe an exhibition um, at the end of the war or after the war ended, um, that never got made, obviously. But so, I, and I think photographs of her were just as important to be included as photographs by her. Taro's most famous story in a way that it really separates Taro from Kappa. Um, after a bombing in Valencia, she goes to the morgue, and then at the beginning of the role, she's looking at the families and friends pressed against the edge of the, the morgue, and you know, she's really, she's literally walking up back and forth in front of the gates, just looking at the, at the, the faces. And then she takes six frames, horizontal, and then she turns the camera vertically, and then she goes in further to this, and it's that photograph that is on the cover of the Hogout magazine, which is, you know, it's just so beautiful to see that unfolding, you know, to witness what the what the photographer was thinking about and try how she was like a cat pacing, trying to just Approaching. trying to get it, and then she got it, and she knew it, she knows it, that stops. For this story in the Rio Segre that was published in Picture Post magazine, and they call him the best war photographer in the world. You know, so he's a 24 at this point, um, not even two years into the war. Very, very, very famous. And also, if you look at the magazines during the course of the war, photography plays a greater and greater role. So at the beginning, the magazines, it's a long article by a journalist with a byline. but And then the photographs are sort of small little illustrations to the story. And then by here, there's no author byline. It's just photographs by Robert Kappa, and it's just a picture essay. And the, the, the story is the, are the pictures. And then the last story is um, just after the war, from March of 1939, and he is back, Kappa's back in Paris, and there's news of, you know, half a million Republicans crossing the line into south of France, escaping, you know, prison or death by Franco. And then Kappa decided to go down and make photographs, and he's registered in the log as entering as Andre Friedman, which was his given name in Budapest, because he knew that Robert Kappa, the famous photographer, would probably not, you know, be given a different tour and maybe not even let in. But Andre Friedman, no one knew who he was.